Hey everybody, it's Al with CAD CAM Wizard and today we're going to talk about some thin wall machining. Uh, this is a wood project and some of the things that we can do to improve the finish on our parts. Now, a couple of things that we want to look at on this project here uh, to begin with is, is the table label, er, level, excuse me, is the table level. You know, as we look up here, we know, we know that we're pocketing. These seem to be pocketing at different depths. You know, we definitely can see some chip out where the material is breaking away. So we want to address that. But the other thing we notice as, as we move down the work, you know, you can see how the pocketing or profiling of this text for this honey, uh, it starts to fade away. Okay, so that's a clear indication that the table isn't level. So uh, I have a blog post on different ways you can face your spoil board. You know, the easiest thing to do is just run a pocket on your spoil board. This way, the tool and your spoil board are, are level with each other, and that should improve that. Uh, if that doesn't solve the issue, you may want to get into tramming the machine if possible. That's where you're going to end up uh, editing, uh, loosening and tightening uh, how the spindle is attached uh, to the machine in order to level it out. And uh, you may need to add some different measurement devices in order to accomplish that. But in most cases, it's really just facing the spoil board that will get the tool level to the work and uh, that will improve that. Now, the other thing we're dealing with here is we have a softer material and you can see we get a, a, a bad uh, finish here, some fuzzies and we get some chip out. So that's what I wanna spend some time talking about right now. So I did uh, regenerate, uh, I redrew this, uh, something similar so we can kind of look at uh, what we're dealing with. Now, let me go ahead and jump over to this file here. So the software I'm using is Bobcad, and really we're just doing some pocketing. So why do we have a bad finish, or why do we have chip out? Well, let's talk about chip out first. You know, when you're, when you're cutting material, there's a certain amount of pressure uh, that's occurring between the tool and the material. And if that pressure is greater than the, the strength of the material, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna break away. So one of the tips or recommendations that I have is to machine your small features first. Now, in this software, I can use a pocketing routine and one of the options that it has is a parallel pocket, but then it will give you final contour. So the trick here is to cut the, the final contour first to come in and profile around the walls first, and then after you've done that, then to come back and have it pocket out the rest of the material. So this software has an option uh, to turn that on, so you use a, a standard pocket, parallel style, and you can say profile before. And a lot of times this will resolve that issue. So if we back plot this here, let me turn off the holder, Let's see the tool, let's go to a wireframe view. You can see it's gonna plunge down and then it's gonna run around the profile. And then after it's done doing that, then it's gonna work back and forth to clean it up. And then it moves to the next one. So uh, I think actually it goes down multiple depths. So that's definitely a good workflow, but uh, it's probably gonna help resolve the chip out issue. Uh, but the other thing that we're dealing with is a poor finish. If we look at the, the finish, you can see it's really fuzzy. So if we resolve the chip out, you know, really we could come back and sand this, but we want to get a good looking finish coming off the machine if we can uh, to minimize additional operations, additional sanding. We kind of want the material prepped and ready for the next process, which might be painting or staining. So. Uh, what you might end up doing is instead of uh, pocketing first, uh, what you may end up doing is just profiling around the part. And with the profile option, you'll, you can change the direction of cut. So you can tell it to cut clockwise or tell it to cut counterclockwise. Um, in this routine here, I, I have the parallel pocket and I have profile afterwards, but the best that I can tell 
I don't see an option in order to tell it to uh, to run the, the profile direction. It's going to default to a climb conventional. So inside, it's going to default to a climb. So inside is going to be counterclockwise, outside would be clockwise. So what we would end up doing is just creating multiple operations. So and in order to do that, we would end up offsetting our geometry first or adjusting how much stock we're gonna leave on the wall for the pocket routine. So that would look something like this. Let me go ahead and delete this feature. <clears throat> okay, so we have all these pockets we wanna cut and we wanna profile them first. So we'll go mill to axis, select geometry. We're gonna come in here and select all our features. So I'm going to just pick through them. With the version 36, there is a new auto chain, so you just left click one time and it will select all the way around. Okay, over here I'm going to set my depth. Let's just say we're going uh, 80. So I'll set that to 80. And then I'll choose OK. All right, in here. I'm gonna come in and just do a profile rough routine. So I'll delete the finish. For the tool size, we're gonna use 062. Speeds and feeds, we're gonna just set this to 20 and 15. Uh, let's go ahead and compute. All right, so we can see they're all, let's go ahead and back plot. So we can see they're all cutting uh, counterclockwise and it just goes from one shape to the next okay what we want to do is reverse the direction of cut why do we want to reverse direction of the cut well there's climb cutting and conventional cutting and you have up cuts and you have down cuts uh, a down cut will usually give you a good finish on the top and up cut it, it's which way the material pulls and then uh, climb and conventional is climb is a more aggressive cut at first where conventional kind of pushes the material. It's just adjust the cutting forces. So in this case, if we want to improve the finish without changing the tool, we can just reverse the direction of cut. Now, if I reverse the direction of cut and recompute here, you can see it's cutting on the outside. So what I want to do is uh, reverse this direction. I don't know, let me, see. Let me make sure I'm, I'm saying what I want to do. Let's back plot. Okay, we have, we're still cutting in this direction. Okay, so what we want to do is change the direction. So we'll come into the feature and uh, we're going to go uh, comp right. So it offsets to the right. So now it's on the outside. Then we're going to come in here and reverse the direction and recompute. And then now that will update. So it's going to cut clockwise and work its way around. So this would be the first step cut all the walls first and then after we're done doing that uh, what we'll do is come back and do a pocket right so we can go back to this feature we can go to machining strategies we can add a pocket routine next we can use the same tool we can use the same speeds and feeds okay and then uh, over here we're gonna set this to 30 uh, you have a couple of different strategies. I'm going to do offset pocket in so it will it should start in the center and then work its way out. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a, a little more material. So I'll say 0.0625 divided by 2. So I'm going to leave 30 on the wall so that way it doesn't come up and machine the wall that we've already finished and we'll compute. Okay, so now we have a profile first. Let me blank this out. It'll do a profile first. Uh, we change the direction of cut, and then it will come back and do a pocket in order to clean everything up. And let's just make sure, actually it's uh, starting on the outside. Let me change this pattern. Maybe I uh, picked the wrong one. Yeah, offset out and recompute. Okay, so now it should start in the center, plunge down, and then work its way out to clear the material. Now, I should have the same option to say whether it's climb or conventional cutting. So if we're still having an issue, we should be able to go over here, change it to conventional, recompute, and then that way we can adjust what direction it's cutting. Okay, so that's what it looks like in Bobcat.